Thank you all. I think you can, from this glimpse, there's much more that could be said. I think you can see that our school is in great hands going forward. Um, we have lots of great new things that we're um, working on. As I said at the beginning, uh, in preparation for the next 20 years. I want to, before uh, the Heldrich breaks out the champagne, a couple other things I'd like to cover. A couple other leaders I'd like to mention. Um, we have a couple associate deans that are part of our team. I'd like to recognize Professor Susan Jackson, who is associate dean for strategic initiatives. <laughs> professor Jackson is a distinguished professor of HR and one of the top cited uh, scholars in her field uh, in, in, the, in the country. And it's been my great privilege to have her work uh, on our associate, on our dean's team this year. Somewhere in the room, I saw Professor Paula Voos. Paula Voos is our, our associate dean for academic affairs. Uh, another uh, uh, amazing scholar who has breadth in the field, who directs our, both our undergraduate and master's program in the Labor Studies Employment Relations Department and somehow uh, manages to uh, also uh, give us time as associate dean. I, I don't, is Elaine Stroud here? I think Elaine's coming later, our associate dean for bus business and administration. She's the gal who keeps reminding us that we have to raise the money that we spend. And she's done a phenomenal job of that. I certainly can't imagine how I could have done this job uh, without her. There are a few others, I think, that I'd like to acknowledge. You've heard uh, a, a number of people mention our New Jersey uh, Healthcare Workforce Talent Network. A, a quick word about that. The state of New Jersey, a number of years ago, developed what they call a series of talent networks in the, in the six uh, core industries in the state of New Jersey. And the idea really has been uh, not unlike, I think, what Claude uh, was telling us earlier, that uh, healthcare is one of the largest industries in the state. Um, and in addition, we have biopharma, we have others. And if the state is going to remain economically competitive, we've got to keep these companies healthy, and we've got to make sure that they have the workforce that they need with those, what are they called? Well, those cases that, that they have. And so the talent networks in these, in these sectors have really been focused on, uh, funded by the state, have really been focused on uh, how do we bring the, the post-secondary ed system, our community colleges, our, our four-year schools, our, our research universities, uh, our numerous non-collegiate post-secondary training providers out there like apprenticeship programs, like hospital-based nursing programs, like Cisco systems that provide post-secondary and, and potentially college-level learning. How do we bring them together with the employers in those industries and where relevant the unions? And how do we really think about how, how is the change happening and what's the new skill set that people need and how do we do something about the lag that always exists between where these agile companies, and they have to be agile if they're going to compete, uh, and backing that into what we do in the higher ed sector? It's, it's not easy. If you are unaware of this, I hope it won't come as a shock. It's not easy to get colleges and universities to change their curricula. Um, it's easier for labor and management to bargain collectively than it is for college faculties to think about changing their curriculum. That's just how it is. Um, but the fact is we have to change, the, the, the companies have to change, the unions have to change, and the universities and colleges have to change. And we have to do it in a way that uh, provides the skill sets. These young people that we're churning out of here, they, they really want to have jobs, they want to make a living, and so we've got to figure that out. So the talent networks are the state of New Jersey's experiment, if you will. I have the great privilege of leading, as the faculty director, the, the healthcare talent network. 
but I am supported by, as the direct manager, Dr. Padma Arvind, who is standing out here, who if you don't know her, you should. Uh, she has figured out in the healthcare sector how to make this talent network idea work. And of course, she, didn't, she couldn't do it without Sid and with and many of our others, but it's been a, a, an amazing, amazing experience uh, for all of us. Another new center that we have launched, it's called uh, our Center for Education and Employment Research. It's led by Heather McKay. I think I saw her in the back of the room uh, somewhere. Where is she? Stand up, Heather. Uh, Heather <laughs> is finishing her doctorate in public policy. Uh, she joins as another force of nature and has really developed a huge uh, grant-funded operation studying um, the role of education, particularly uh, in the community college system, uh, how those changes in the community college are helping uh, with the workforce development, uh, the, the growing the workforce development system. I want to recognize two members of the Employee Ownership Foundation, Michael Keeling, and, uh, and uh, uh, Joe Cabral, where are you? Michael, Joe. <laughs> the gener very generous contributions from the Employee Ownership Foundation have been central to Professor Blasey's and Cruz's work on social capitalism. If you're not familiar with this work on employee ownership, shared capitalism, you really, it's just an amazing body of work uh, Marianne Beister, who also supports that, couldn't be with us today, but uh, please send Marianne, Joseph and Doug, send Marianne our, our regards and our thanks as well. There are a couple of young women I, I need to give uh, some special recognition to because they made today's event happen. Renee Walker is our communications director over here in this corner. And Mira Ananth is back in this corner. He's a, she's our Director of Development. They were forced, uh, we got a little late start, frankly, because I don't want to blame everything on Secretary Perez. But we had a little bit of a negotiation about was he coming, when, when was he coming, and that got us a little behind. So these two had to jump in, get it all together, and make it happen so that all you wonderful people are here with us today. Um, now it is time for some food, some wine, and some socializing. Here's the plan. Uh, did I see thumbs up? We are going to, uh, as soon as I stop talking, which is very soon, we are going to adjourn to this outer room where I am hoping, because we're running just a tad early, which I never imagined could happen, um, we are going to adjourn to the outer room here where you will find a bar set up with beer and wine. Those of you who prefer stronger drink will need to take yourself over to the Christopher's Lounge at your own expense. But the beer and wine, and when you exit the room, you will be served a glass of champagne courtesy of the Heldrich, our partners here at the Heldrich Center. As Bill told you, we do a lot of our programs here. They are our business partners in many ways. They do a great job, and they want to help us celebrate with uh, providing you with a glass of champagne. Um, while you're sipping and, and chatting for a few minutes, the hotel staff is going to do a little room rearranging and make sure the food setup is out. It'll be in the next room. I know we told you it was reception, but I, I lied. It's dinner, folks. Uh, so I hope you came. I hope you, hope you came with your uh, appetite. While we're socializing this evening, we're going to be entertained by a jazz trio from the Rutgers Music Program at the Mason Gross School of the Arts. And I I want to check with Mira. Have I neglected anything? Am I good? Renee, are we good? Well, then, I want to uh, thank all of our presenters this afternoon for the great job that they did. Gabrielle, Claude, Sid, Charlie, Dana, Bill, 
Adrian and Barbara, I want to thank all of you for being here and on this uh, afternoon at the beginning of Thanksgiving week. Uh, and I want to thank the tech guys for the uh, terrific job on the technology. This man, uh, this is an inside story for the, my, my, my SAG after friends, got a great outside voice over there. And finally, I want to acknowledge the hotel staff who are members of the hotel and restaurant employees, I think Local 6, if I'm not mistaken. Is that right? Charlie, where are you? Laurel, I think it's Local 6. And also the, uh, others of them that are a member of the operating engineers, uh, Local 68. And with that, uh, we are adjourned. Thank you very much.